All right, here are the topics on Monday's quiz. <clears throat> First, work. You should be able to calculate work using the equation work equals force times distance, and if there's an angle, work equals the force cosine theta times the distance. So if there's a angle between the force and the displacement, you have to use cosine theta to get the part of the force in the direction of the displacement. You should also be able to find the sign of work. So let's say force is up and displacement is down. So I should have labeled those. That was force and displacement. Force and displacement here are in opposite directions, so work is negative. If the force and the displacement are in the same direction, the work is positive. And if the force and the displacement make a right angle, there is zero work done. So, you should be able to do all that. You should be able to calculate power using power equals work over time. You should know that the units for power are watts, W, and the units for work up here, joules. You should know the work kinetic th energy theorem, which says that work is the change in kinetic energy. And we can rewrite that 1 half mass times the final velocity squared minus 1 half mass times the initial velocity squared. You should also really know those units and equations on that sheet I gave you. Not only will you have a special quiz on the units and equations, I've put two units questions on the quiz. Um, they're not exactly the same as the sheet because you're memorizing the sheet for its own quiz. And then I'm going to ask you to use those units on the regular weekly quiz. So be ready for that. Next I'll give you a couple questions that are similar. Two ones on the quiz. Okay, first example. You should be able to do a question like this. Student A lifts a 50 newton box from the floor to a height of 0.4 meters in two seconds. Student B lifts a 40 newton box from the floor to a height of 0.5 meters in one second. Compared to student A, student B does the same work but develops more power, same work but develops less power, more work but develops less power, less work but develops more power. So we need to find the work and power from each student and compare them. So if we're finding work and power, we're going to need the work equation, which is F, and if there's an angle between the force and the displacement, cosine theta, times the distance, and power, which is work over time. So if there is work, I bet we're going to have to find it in order to plug it into the power equation. Let's do this for both students, student A, and we'll do it for student B. So student A lifts a 50 newton box from the floor to a height of 0.4 meters in two seconds. Well, if the student lifted the 50 newton box, the student had to give at least the normal force um, of 50 newtons to keep that box from falling back down to the floor. So I think it's safe to assume that student A applied 50 newtons. Um, student A lifted that box to a height of 0.4 meters, so that force moved the box a distance of 0 0.4 meters, and that happened in two seconds. So we're supposed to find the work and the power. First, the work. Work equals force times distance, and if there's an angle between them, we use cosine. No angle is given, you lift the box straight up, so just force 50 newtons times distance, 0 0.4 meters. And 50 newtons times 0.4 meters is 20 newtons, or sorry, 20 joules, so work, 20 joules. And then we're supposed to find the power for student A. So power equals work over tw time, 20 joules, over 2 seconds, power is 10 watts. 
So we've got the power for student A, and we've got the work for student A. Now student B. Uh, student B lifts a 40 Newton box, so let's assume that they're applying the same normal force to get the box up there, to a height of 0 0.5 meters. So the force moves the box a distance of 0 0.5 meters, and does so in a time of one second. First, the work. No angle between them. We're lifting straight up. So work equals 40 newtons times 0 0.50 meters. Work equals 20 joules. OK, so same work. So we can eliminate these two answers. Same work, 20 joules. And then power equals work over time. So 20 joules over one second equals 20 watts. So that's our power. So student B had more power. So compared to student A, student B does, okay, the same work, but more power. Answer choice one. Okay, next for another question like the ones on the quiz. Here's a discussion question we did in class. Um, and it's really unclear what the answer is because it's circled as two of them on there. So I'll give you what the right one is in just a second. Discussion question two, friction and work. A box is being pulled across a rough floor at a constant speed. What can you say about the work done by friction? So let's look down here in the diagram. I included this slide because it has things drawn for us. So if you're looking down here in the diagram, we already have the displacement drawn for us. It is to the right, meaning that the friction points to the left because friction opposes motion. So if friction is the force we're worried about and the displacement right here is to the right, that's in opposite directions, making the work done by friction negative, because friction, the force we're worried about, is in the opposite direction of the displacement. So friction does negative work. All right, make sure you know how to find the sign of work, positive, negative, or zero. All right, and here's one of the questions I had you do in tutorial, and then an added twist on it. So I've added a second part to this question that you didn't do in tutorial originally. How much work is required for a 50 kilogram ice skater to increase her speed from 4 meters per second to 9.4 meters per second in 2 seconds? So first of all, we're dealing with work, which is work equals force times distance. And so in my head, I say, hmm, I wonder why they gave me a time here. I wonder if this question is trying to trick me into thinking this is power. Maybe the time will be useful. Let's see what we can do. I do, however, know we have work and something moving, and it's changing speeds. So if something's changing speeds, and we're dealing with work, my mind goes to the work kinetic energy theorem, because that equation, work, which is the change in kinetic energy, is 1 half the mass times the final velocity squared. And we have a final velocity, minus 1 half the mass times the initial velocity squared. And we have an initial velocity. So seeing two velocities um, and work mentioned, my mind goes to the work kinetic energy theorem. So let's see if that can help us. So we want to change the skater's speed from 4 meters per second to 9.4 meters per second. And we know her mass. So now I'm definitely thinking work kinetic energy theorem because we know all the variables in this except work. We know her mass check, we know final velocity, we know initial velocity, definitely no mass, we know what one half is. So all we don't know is the work. So let's see what happens. Work equals one half mass times final velocity squared minus one half mass initial velocity squared. And by the way, if you were confused about what to do in this problem, listing givens would probably be helpful because then when you think through all your equations like, whoa, I know all the things in the work kinetic energy theorem. Okay, so I'm finding work. The equation's already solved for what I want, so I can just plug in. Work equals 1 half, 50 kilograms, times 9.4 meters per second, squared minus, and I'm going to go to the next line because I ran out of room, 1 half, 50 kilograms, times 4.0 meters per second, squared. Okay, um, let's solve out both those parts, uh, the multiplied parts, and see what we get. Uh, one half of 50 is 
25, but 9.4 is hard for me to do in my head, so I'm going to grab the calculator. Okay, so I get that this part, let me get some colors in here. I get that this part here is 2,209 joules, and this other part here is 400 joules, and I kept the negative from the equation. So 2,209 minus 400 is 1,809 joules. Notice, by the way, that I kept my units as I was doing the work. Ha 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 ha, work. Which you are expected to do on the AP exam. If you drop units, you can lose a point. So don't ever drop your units. Keep them there, just like I did throughout all my work. Now the question asks, how much work is required to bring her to rest in another four seconds? Now this question could be unclear, but when I wrote it, I definitely intended that once she was at 9.4, we're now bringing her to rest. So 9.4 is now her initial velocity, and rest, or zero, is her final velocity. So let's see if I can do this one in the margins here, because it's going to turn out to be pretty simple. One of the velocities is zero, so I know something's going to go away. So draw a little line here so I don't get confused. Work is the change in kinetic energy. And so I'm writing, whoops, didn't mean to do that. So I'm writing the change in kinetic energy. Um, so it says we're bringing her to rest, meaning her final velocity is zero, meaning this term goes away, and I'm just left with this. Um, I just told you that in this problem I intended her initial velocity to be 9.4 meters per second. So work equals negative one-half. I just kept the negative from the equation, 50 kilograms, 9.4 meters per second, and squared. And we just found out that 1 half 50 times 9.4 squared is 2,209 joules. So work equals negative 2,209 joules. And it turned out we did not need those times after all. There we go. All this stuff, be ready to do a quiz on Monday. Confused about anything? Rewind thinking, man, this was kind of a long video, I don't want to rewind. Do you not want to rewind bad enough to not do well in the quiz? If you didn't understand something, take a minute, rewind. Also, I gave you the pages in the Princeton book that will be in the post um, on the website. Be sure to look at those, try all those example problems, and you should be super ready. That's all. Have a good weekend.